I'm Court Beauvais. Today I'm going to talk with you about business communication on the job. And I'm going to share with you fascinating stories about recent college graduates from across the country, who my co-author, John Phil, and I recently met. Their experiences with newer tools of communication are so interesting, we thought you'd like to hear about them. Importantly, consider carefully the relevancy of what you're teaching in your business communication classes in light of what you're about to hear. Meg Stuyvesant writes a blog for a small historical society, the Stickley Museum at Craftsman Farms in Cary, North Carolina. She also set up a group for the museum on Flickr, a photo sharing and social networking site, so members can submit photos and put them on the internet. Adam Haver of Salt Lake City, Utah, writes a blog for sendoutcards.com, a greeting card company to keep distributors up to date about its products. Aga Westfall of the Santee Agency, an advertising firm in Phoenix, Arizona, uses the Twitter microblogging tool for research and networking. Twitter Enthusiasts, a group that includes employees at Southwest Airlines, H&R Block, Starbucks, and thousands of smaller companies, have now sent over one billion messages using the service. Melissa Pop, who is employed by Best Buy in Dover, Delaware, uses YouTube, the popular video content site used by more than 70 million people a month in the United States to educate her customers about the purchases of electronic products. Eric Binfett, who now works in the insurance industry in Minnesota, used his creative and technical skills to write and produce the winning video in a Dairy Queen employee contest. The video did such a great job of showcasing some important new branding elements that the store owner pitched it to corporate as a potential commercial. Matt Niederlander of Pompano Beach, Florida, just launched a new advertising agency that allows anyone to create a concept for a commercial, post it on YouTube, and get paid based on how many people view it. Gerald Thompson of Clinton, Washington, just launched In My Life Video, a service that produces personal autobiographies. The skills he honed in class helped him write the copy for his website and a script for a promotional video he posted on YouTube. Philip Beach of Portland, Oregon, owner of a home video studio photography franchise, uses the social networking site Facebook with more than 50 million members to communicate with other franchise owners and to keep up to date with their businesses and lives. He also uses it to market his business and to educate prospective clients about his services. Matthew Mayer of Oakland, California is an e-learning developer who has just written and produced a series of podcasts which are digital audio files that can be heard on a computer or a music player, such as an iPod, for Roche, the pharmaceutical company, for distributing technical sales material. Theodore Rubin of Atlanta, Georgia, who works for Career Connection, uses RSS news feeds to receive updates from vendors, to get the latest news from his favorite newspapers, magazines, and web news sites, and to track the continuous results from his searches on Google News. If you are one of the growing number of instructors now using news feeds to make out-of-class announcements and to send assignments to students, you already know how powerful this convenient technology can be. Liz Wise works for Drillspot.com, a tools and hardware website based in Boulder, Colorado. She and her co-workers use a wiki, the group writing technology now used by 44% of all U.S. companies and included in a number of collaboration tools, including Microsoft's. She uses this to communicate between departments and to avoid everyday meetings and to use as a repository of instructions for tasks and procedures. As a company photographer, Liz writes about products that she has photographed and released to the website's catalog. All employees subscribe to an RSS news feed that lets them know what new items and pages have been added to the catalog. Interdepartmental communication at the company is done by instant messaging, a medium that now surpasses email in volume. As these examples demonstrate, electronic communication is now commonplace even in medium and small sized organizations and in both metropolitan and rural areas. Clearly, business communication is changing. Is your text keeping up to date? Most textbooks have been incredibly slow in adapting to this digital age. If your current textbook doesn't provide instruction about the types of electronic communication described in these examples, it doesn't support your mission to help students prepare to meet employer expectations. Using an up-to-date text that is more relevant to today's media-savvy students, many of whom are already using these tools at work, 
will also lead to greater respect for your course by students, colleagues, and your college's administration. Now, please get a piece of paper and number it 1 to 15. For each question I ask, write yes or no. Are you ready? Let's begin. Does your current text include, number one, a dedicated chapter on electronic communication? Two, a discussion of corporate blogs with annotated examples. Three, a discussion of instant messaging with one or more model documents. Four, a discussion and illustration of a wiki with hands-on experience for students using a real live wiki editor on the text website. Five, a discussion of podcasting, including a sample podcast on the text website for students to listen to and critique. Six, a discussion of writing for the web, along with web page examples. Seven, end of chapter cases and exercises that involve students in blogging, instant messaging, text messaging, wikis, and podcasting. Eight, interactive document makeovers that reinforce important concepts in every chapter. Nine, a discussion and illustration of e-portfolios and their role in career planning. Ten, a discussion and presentation of web-based meetings. Eleven, a sample PDF document showing on-screen commenting features. 12. A description and illustration of shared online workspaces. 13. An illustration of an interview simulator. 14. Discussion and illustration of RSS news feeds. And 15. Discussion and illustration of social networking sites including their growing importance in career management and both internal and external business communication. Now please tally all of your yeses and all of your noes. And here's the way I suggest you score your tally. If you're using a Bovan fill text, you would have said yes to all 15 questions. And as a result, I'd say you're using an excellent, modern, relevant text that prepares students for the demands of today's workplace. If you tallied 13 yeses, you're using a good text. If you tallied only 11 yeses, you're using only a fair text. If you wrote yes only nine times or less, I'm sorry to say that your current text is hopelessly out of date and reflects business communication practices of the last century, not the social media and electronic media environment of the 21st century. Switching immediately to a text scoring 15 yeses will help your students succeed in these challenging times. If your tally suggests your current textbook is behind the times, you can easily close the gap by requesting an examination copy of one or more of the texts on this page. Call Pearson Education's customer service at 800-526-0485. For a rich array of resources for teaching social media and electronic communication, go to Business Communication Headline News, look under Categories in the left-hand column, and select the topics in which you're interested. www.businesscommunicationheadlinenews.com For teaching tips and techniques, often about social media and electronic communication, Go to Beauvais and Phil's blog, www.beauvaisandphilbusinesscommunicationblog.com. For more than 175 PowerPoint slideshows, many dealing with social media and electronic communication, go to Real-Time Updates and select Instructor Media. That's www.real-timeupdates.com. Watch business communication videos on Beauvais and Phil's video channel on YouTube. To find the channel, go to youtube.com and enter Bovey and Phil in the search box. Thanks for watching.